This lesson is on graphing general rational functions. So rational just means a, a polynomial fraction. So we're going to be things with factoring and stuff. And all your lessons can be found at mrmathblog.com. So uh, this is an Algebra 2 lesson. So when you go there, you go click your Algebra 2 link. And that'll get us in there. Okay, so don't let this big old scary formula scare you here. So it just means you got this function right here where you have a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom right here. So if you have this, and that's just a rational, it just means you got a fractional uh, polynomial equation. So the x-intercepts are when the top equals 0, okay? So you set the top equal to 0. That's my p of x right there. So... Uh, that's where your x-intercepts are. The vertical asymptotes are when the bottom equals zero. So if you can get the bottom to equal zero, those are the vertical asymptotes. And uh, the graph has at most one horizontal asymptote that are determined by the degrees. Okay, the degrees are the numbers that go with the x's on top and on bottom. Okay, and uh, uh, so uh, if it if your top number, if your top degree is less than the bottom degree, then your your horizontal asymptote is always y equals zero. I have an example of that. And if your uh, top equals your bottom, so it doesn't matter what these numbers are, the coefficients right there, but if your top equals your bottom, then you just reduce your leading coefficients. It's just these ones. You just disregard all this other stuff right here. Because you're talking about infinity, and when you go to infinity, these numbers, uh, they become insignificant when you're talking about infinity. So you, you're just dealing with the leading coefficients right here. So if these degrees equal each other, if m equals n, then you just reduce the leading coefficients. I'll show you an example of that. And uh, if um, uh, the top is greater than the bottom, then you don't have a slow, uh, horizontal asymptote. You'll have a slant asymptote, okay? And if and only if, this is one degree bigger than this one right here. And I have an example of that also, okay? So let's go ahead and get started here. Let's graph this one. State the domain and range. All right. I don't think I stated the domain and range, so I'll, I'll talk about that. Okay. Now, there's no x here, so you can think of it as like x to the zero, Okay, so since um, uh, this degree on top is less than this degree, this degree is 2, then it's going to be this one. Then we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Okay, so an asymptote is a, a, a line that your graph infinitely gets close to. I'll show you in just a second. Okay, so since the numerator is less than the denominator, then y equals 0 is our horizontal asymptote. And the denominator will never equal 0 because it's just 6, you guys. 6 will never equal 0. So there's no x-intercept. Okay, and um, uh, let's see. I just moved that up right there. The denominator also will never equal 0. Oops, sorry. My hand bumped it. My ring on my finger bumped uh, the table. Um, so the denominator will never equal 0 because when you square a number and you add 1, it's always going to be at least 1 right there. So I can never get the denominator equal to 0, so it's not going to have any vertical asymptotes either. Okay, So you have vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals 0. So um, the only asymptote that we have is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So it's going to asymptotically approach this line right here, y equals 0. So that's why I have this graph right here. Here's a t-chart right here. I'm going to plug in negative 3 right there. Negative 3 squared plus 1. Put that in a denominator. So that's going to get me uh, 9 plus 1, which is 10. And then so 6 over 10 is 0. 0.6. Now negative 3 squared is the same as positive 3 squared. So I'm going to get the same values on that. Okay, so I graphed um, uh, negative 3.6, okay, and then positive 3.6. All right, so let's graph uh, negative 2. So I'm going to plug in negative 2 right here. Negative 2 squared is 4. It's going to be the same as this. These two are going to match up right here. 2 squared is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. So we get 6 fifths, which is 1.2. Okay, so there's that one right there. Okay, negative 1 squared is uh, 1. So 1 plus 1 is 3. So I graphed there, that 3. And then uh, 0 squared is uh, 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 6 over 1 is 6. Okay, so it's going to be a graph that, remember, asymptotically, it's going to flare down. It'll infinitely get close to this asymptote right here, but it'll never cross it. And then it's going to go up here. It's going to round right there. It doesn't go, don't make a sharpie. It doesn't go into a point. It's going to round, and it's going to come flare back down and asymptotically go down towards zero. Okay, there's that guy right there. All right, all right, let's try another one here. Okay, this one, here the degrees are the same right here. You got an x squared on top and x squared on top on bottom. 
But first, let's do an x-intercept. The x-intercept's when the top equals 0. So you can set this equal to 0 at 0. So I have an x-intercept at x equals 0. Okay, and then uh, you now look at the, uh, the denominator and set that equal to 0. Okay, so x squared minus 9 factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, so the, uh, when you set those equal to 0, we get plus or minus 3. So there's vertical asymptotes when the denominator equals 0. Okay, so my graph is going to asymptotically go through there. Now, it's either going to do, when it's doing something like this, it's either going to be, um, uh, let's see, does it have, oh, and then um, um, the horizontal asymptote, you guys, the horizontal asymptote, since these degrees are equal, then I just, I just focus on these leading coefficients. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y equals 2 over 1. Because when you're talking about infinity, you guys, infinity squared times 2, infinity squared times 1, and then you subtract 9, well, that 9 becomes an insignificant number when you're talking about infinity. Okay, so you're always talking about infinity when you're doing these graphs and asymptotes and stuff. So, so this minus 9 goes away, and so you get 2 over 1, which is 2, so there's a, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Okay, so we look at the degrees to get my horizontal asymptote right there. All right, so it's either going to look like this and go here and here with the horseshoe going like this, or, or um, and I know that's probably what's going to be because of that point right there from my x-intercept, or it would be a horseshoe going up here and you'd have them asymptotically going towards there. Well, let's make a t-chart, you guys, and um, uh, I know uh, it's at 0, 0, so plug in negative 5 right there. 2 times negative 5 is 25. Over 25 minus 9, I get 3.1. So um, at x equals negative 5, which is way over here, I get 3.1, and same with positive, okay? So now I can get a real general picture right there. So there's uh, when I plugged in x equals negative 4, I get 4.6, okay? And then you can kind of see what's going to happen with that right there. And then let's do um, these guys right here. Let's do negative 2. It's probably going to be somewhere down here. So when I plug in negative 2, okay, negative 2 squared is um, 4. 2 times 4 is 8. 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So 8 over negative 5 in the calculator is negative 1.6. So I get negative 1.6 right there. So there's my horseshoe, it's going like that. So there's that graph, and it asymptotically goes towards the asymptotes. It'll infinitely get close towards those asymptotes right there. All right, let's try this one here, okay? Now, um, uh, I'll do this at the end, but I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2, so there's going to be a vertical asymptote right here. It's going to have a uh, x-intercepts when the top equals 0. I think I did that first. Okay, yeah, so the numerator factor is 2x plus 4 times x minus 1, so we have uh, x-intercepts at negative 4. We set that equal to 0 and set that equal to 0 and positive 1. So there's negative 4 and positive 1. These are going by 2s, by the way. This is negative 2, this is negative 4. This is positive 2, this is positive 4. Okay, what I do next here? Uh, okay, and so since the degree in the numerator is an x squared and the degree in the denominator is an x, then it's one degree greater, so this has a slant asymptote. There's no horizontal asymptote. And the slant asymptote, we do it by long division. We divide the bottom into the top right there. Okay, so remember long division? So then we say uh, this x times what will get me x squared? Well, x times x will get me x squared, and then we multiply this x times this, and then times this, so we get x squared minus 2. Okay, and then we parentheses and subtract that. Okay, so these guys cancel, x squared minus x squared, 3 minus a minus 2 is 3 plus 2, so it's 5x. Okay, and then you slide down the next minus 4, and then we do it again. x times what will get me this positive 5x? Well, x times positive 5, so I'm going to put a plus 5 right up there. Okay, and then we multiply this plus 5 times this and this and write it down here. Remember doing that? Okay, and then parentheses and subtract. Okay, now when we're uh, dealing with asymptotes, we're talking about infinity. So this remainder become, becomes insignificant. So my slant asymptote is y equals this piece up here. We got it from long division. So y equals x plus 5. So here's 2, here's 4, here's 6, so here's plus 5, and then my slope is up 1 over 1. It's 1 over 1. So from here, I'm going to go up 1 over 1, and I'm going to draw in a slant asymptote, a dotted asymptote right there. Okay, there's the slant guy right there. All right, now here's the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote's at x equals 2. That's when the denominator equals 0. 
Okay, now I know it's going through these two x-intercepts, so what's probably going to happen is it's going to do a little horseshoe towards the asymptotes here, and then somewhere up here it's going to be uh, something going up towards these asymptotes. It's always opposites on these guys, okay? So let's just plot some points right here. So here we go. We're going to plot in. Uh, so there's uh, those zeros right there. And then when we plot in all the other points right there, I get all these guys. So at negative 8, 3.6. Okay, so here's negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, so 3, 3.6, or sorry, negative 3.6 is going to be down somewhere around here. Negative 4, 0 is right there. Here is um, uh, 0, 2 is going to be right there. So can you see it kind of going up and over right there? Okay, and then graph the ones on top also. And so it's going to be a graph that kind of looks like that. All right, I hope that helps you guys, and, and take care.